Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will do my best. Uh, uh, Mr. Director Ray, uh, other members of the committee have raised uh, their concerns over the increase in hate crimes in recent years against uh, Latinos, African Americans, the LGBTQIA community, and others. Uh, over the last year, we've seen a significant increase in violence specifically against Asian Americans, including in my home state of California. Uh, no earlier in this hearing, uh, members raised the recent lethal attacks in San Francisco and New York as some examples. Just last week in Sacramento, California, a man returned to the premises of an Asian family-run butcher shop with a mutilated cat carcass for no apparent reason other than to stoke fear. The incident is currently under investigation as a hate crime. It's clear to me that this uptick in violence against Asian Americans is the direct result of racist rhetoric used by political leaders with intentional regard to the coronavirus pandemic, such as when uh, former President Donald Trump has used offensive references to the coronavirus. Indeed, a March 2020 FBI assessment conducted by the FBI's Houston office and distributed to law enforcement across the country, and I'll quote, it, well, it predicted a future surge in hate crimes against Asian Americans due to the spread of coronavirus. And I want to quote from that assessment. The FBI makes this assessment based on the assumption that a portion of the U.S. public will associate COVID-19 with China and Asian American populations. Uh, so I know Senator Hirono has already raised the topic, but I wanted to ask a couple more specific follow-up questions. Uh, to what extent, Director Ray, do you believe the increase in violence against Asian Americans has been influenced by reckless rhetoric concerning the pandemic? Two, what steps is the FBI taking to address the increase in hate crimes against Asian Americans? And three, part of that, I hope, is uh, uh, an update on how the FBI is proactively working to overcome trust issues in immigrant communities and communities of color. So, Senator, uh, I, let me try to take all three questions in turn. Um, first, uh, I, I want to be careful as FBI director not to start to get in the business of, of kind of weighing in and characterizing rhetoric, because as you know, you know, we focus on the violence, not on the ideology or the motivation. So I, I would largely on that issue uh, just reaffirm the intelligence assessment uh, that's already been produced through the appropriate channels. Uh, on the second two questions uh, in terms of uh, trying to be um, proactive, uh, a number of things that we're doing. So in addition to our investigations, which we, which we work closely with state and local, uh, in some cases tribal and other federal law enforcement agencies, uh, and that we, we have some cases we'll be able to bring federal cases, working with our civil rights division counterparts, the prosecutors. In other cases, even if it's going to be a state or local charge, which sometimes may be the best charge available based on the facts, we are trying to provide forensic support, other kinds of expertise and experience to help support the state and local prosecution. We're also trying to do a lot more public outreach, uh, which is both with the community itself, uh, but also with state and local law enforcement. And in some cases, uh, field offices are bringing them together so it's a, a group discussion, which I think has a lot of value. We're also providing training. So we're doing a lot of training. Uh, we've done hundreds of seminars, workshops uh, for both law enforcement and community groups, um, religious organizations, so forth. And that includes hate crimes training, not just for the hundreds of special agents at the FBI, but for thousands, thousands of police officers. Uh, when it comes specifically to the last part of your question, the, um, uh, the trust issues, uh, you know, part of that is, is demonstrating through our work that we're going to do the right thing in the right way uh, and that we're going to respond just as aggressively and professionally to crimes against them as victims uh, as they see with other kinds of crimes. Uh, and we have done, just since March of, uh, of 2020, I think we've done 60, over 60 liaison events uh, or trainings specifically geared towards the Asian American Pacific Islander community. Um, 
And we've also tried to put out intelligence reports like the one you referenced that, that call out the issue. Great. Uh, well, I think it just uh, yet another example of the value of increased and improved diversity, uh, not just uh, throughout the ranks of the agency, but especially amongst agents and amongst leadership. Uh, now, your uh, uh, examples of collaboration with local law enforcement actually a great transition to my next question. Uh, some of the most striking revelations in the aftermath of the January 6th insurrection here in the Capitol were reports reports that some members of the Capitol Police were sympathetic to the insurrectionists, that they posed for photos, provided directions, and uh, may have even expressed support for those attacking the very building they're sworn to protect. I understand that six Capitol Police officers have been suspended and at least 29 others are under investigation for their alleged role in the attack. We've also learned that among those participating in the insurrection were numerous off-duty law enforcement officers from around the country. Rooting out white supremacists and right-wing extremists is a challenge that local uh, law enforcement agencies and even the United States military is facing across the country. Director Ray, how is the FBI assisting law enforcement agencies across the country to root out white supremacy or other forms of extremism? And do you believe there's a concerted effort by right-wing extremists to infiltrate law enforcement agencies? So uh, I guess a few things I would say on this topic. Um, certainly it is true that in, in some instances, uh, as we're uh, continue to investigate the January 6th attack. There have been some instances of current or, or in particular former military or law enforcement who participated, and um, we want to pursue those cases just as aggressively as we would anybody else. Um, we are also, though, which may go more to the heart of your question, uh, when appropriate, uh, referring individuals to uh, their um, the department that employs them for possible administrative or disciplinary action um, under their rules as appropriate. Uh, we work very closely with um, both our law enforcement partners and our military partners uh, in their efforts to uh, address any kind of um, violent extremism that may be in their midst. We view that as, a, in effect, a kind of uh, insider threat, if you will. Uh, and they do too. And I want to be clear that in my experience, uh, and I'm dealing with our law enforcement partners and our military partners every single day, the vast, 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 vast majority of the men and women in uniform, both in law enforcement and the military, are brave, selfless, professional, high integrity individuals. Uh, but when there are bad apples in the midst, we work with our partners to, uh, to try to get ahead of it. Yeah, I, I, Thank I you. agree with that. Uh, a final statement, but the, the threat and the danger uh, that those few bad apples present uh, are uh, to be taken very seriously, I understand. So hope to work with you possibly to develop further uh, best practices and protocols uh, to be shared with uh, agencies around the country. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.